Hi, I'm Jonah Rosenblum. I'm sports editor of the Daily Northwestern. I'm joined here today by football beat writers Josh Walvish and Colin Becht. Well, Northwestern picked up a much-needed win against Indiana, 59-38 in Bloomington. But this weekend gets a little bit harder. They take on number nine Nebraska in Lincoln, one of the toughest college football atmospheres in the country, and they're taking on a Cornhuskers team that is seven and one. Their only <coughs> loss coming to Wisconsin. Um, Josh, let's start with that tremendous offensive performance last week. 59 points. Dan Persa, Kane Coulter, Drake Dunsmore just carved up that Indiana defense. The question is, it, is, it, is it sustainable? It's, it's one thing to score points against Indiana. It's another thing to score against the Nebraska team that gave up just three points to Michigan State. I don't think they're going to necessarily score 59 points against Nebraska, mostly because I don't think they'll get enough possessions to do that. But I think they'll be able to score on what really was nine of ten possessions against Indiana. Um, I'm going to discount the two niceties from Pat Fitzgerald taking the knees at the end of both halves, uh, especially the one at the end of the game when they were inside the five. But they really scored, they scored on nine of ten drives, and that's something they can do. They can score 90 percent of their drives against Nebraska, and that's what they're going to really need to do if they're going to keep up with Nebraska. And you mentioned Coach Pat Fitzgerald being kind enough to kneel on a couple of plays at the end of halves. Well, speaking of kind, the Northwestern defense was really kind as well, weren't they? Cause they allowed uh, Stephen Houston, Stephen Houston, whatever, to, to go all over the field. They allowed Trey Roberson just to have free range on that field, which I thought very kind to them. The question is, is you know, obviously there are concerns, and especially in the rushing attack. Rex Burkett has had so much success this year. He's had 5.3 yards per carry, 12 touchdowns. Taylor Martinez, their quarterback, can also run the ball. Can Northwestern stop the run? Can they stop this Nebraska rushing attack? Well, if they can't stop Indiana's rushing attack, they, they can't stop Nebraska's rushing attack. Because both Roberson and Houston had over 100 yards rushing. And basically what Northwestern faced this week in Nebraska is improved versions of both those players. So I think Martinez will pick up yards, and I think Burkhead will pick up yards. I think Nebraska will be able to run the ball down Northwestern's throat. They won't need Martinez to throw the ball much, um, and it, you, it, would just, it would just not be a good day for Northwestern's run defense. Very likely. And then uh, going to Nebraska's one loss of this season, they're 7-1, and one, but they did get pounded at Camp Randall Stadium up in Madison. The question is, is can Northwestern emulate Wisconsin? Wisconsin obviously plays a very different style of football. I mean, they've got more of a rush-based attack. Mm -hmm. But can Northwestern do what Wisconsin did? Obviously, they're going to be studying film. They're going to be trying to see what the Badgers did so successfully. Can they replicate or not? Well, sort of what Colin just said, there's no way the Northwestern defense is going to replicate what Wisconsin defense did against Nebraska. But going to the offense side, you use the word pound, and that's something Northwestern can do. They're gonna, they can use that power rushing attack, which I know Fitz would love to establish against Nebraska, try to take time off the clock, try to keep his defense off the field. They don't necessarily have the backs like James Wayne Monty Ball that Wisconsin does, but I think between Jacob Schmidt, Adonis Smith, Trayvon Green, Tyrus Jones, you keep bringing down the list of, of the running backs they have. I think they have enough talent there to really just kind of pound and kind of slowly grind out some rushing yards on the Nebraska defense and keep Northwestern's defense off the field. And the one, th the one concern, of course, that you mentioned is that Monte Ball had four touchdowns against uh, Nebraska. Not really sure Trayvon Green can quite uh, live up to that performance. And then, uh, Colin, I, I wanted to ask you a little bit. Um, the Nebraska defense really struggled against Russell Wilson, and that, that was another key in how Wisconsin was able to hand Nebraska, Nebraska their only loss of the season. Russell Wilson ran for 32 yards. He ran for a touchdown. He also tossed a couple of touchdown passes. So, you know, does, does this bode well for Northwestern? So obviously, Dan Purse is a dual-threat quarterback. Can he do some of what Russell Wilson was able to do so successfully? Well, I think the important thing to keep in mind here, Joan, is that a lot of Russell Wilson's success in that game came from Wisconsin's defensive success. Uh, Taylor Martinez threw, turned the ball over several times, and you know it wore down Nebraska's defense. They didn't get the rest that they usually get. They were facing short fields, so that led to a lot of Russell Wilson's success. So I think Persa will have, some, I think him and Coulter will have some success because I think that d unique, you know, two quarterback look will throw off Nebraska's defense. But he, they won't have the same success that uh, that Wilson and Nebra and Wisconsin had against Nebraska because Northwestern's defense isn't Wisconsin's defense. And so given that defense, the question is, is anyone on this panel bold enough to pick Northwestern? So we're getting to that section of, of the, of the uh, program, and uh, I see both of you. Everyone looks so nice, clean-shaven. So that, that's good. Everyone's clean-shaven except for me. I'm waiting until the Northwestern defense finally surrenders less than 30 points. Then I'll shave. But uh, next year, yeah, exactly. So uh, it's going to have to be a pretty long beard here. I'll be like a Hasidic Jew. Um, so, Josh, let's get to the picks, uh, the best part of the program. Josh, are you willing to put your foot on the line? Are you willing to say Northwestern's going to win this game? Big upset. 
I'm going to put my foot out there, but I'm going to say Nebraska just blows out Northwestern. Give me 48 17 in favor of the Corn Oscars. You're not shaving this week. How about you, Colin? Well, Nebraska, they're 9 they're 0 when Burkhead gets 100 or more yards on the ground, and I think there's that's pretty much a guarantee that he'll do that this week. So, so uh, I'm picking Nebraska as well, 42 uh, 24. The funny thing is, is I've noticed a lot of optimism on campus this week, actually. I've, I've been talking to a few people, and, and they're, they're playing up Northwestern. I mean, you obviously had the 59 points on offense. You've had Dan Persa, Kane Coulter looking pretty nice. But I have to agree with you guys. There, there's no chance here, guys. This is easy, because the answer is Nebraska's going to win this game because America loves corn. They love corn. They love corn huskers. And Nebraska is going to run away with this game behind sexy Rexy Burkhead. <laughs> He's, he's steamrolled this entire conference all year, and he's going to steamroll that weak Northwestern defense. Taylor Martinez is going to have a lot of fun out there. Nebraska wins 52-14, to 14, and guys, honestly, their hopes for a bowl win will come at home against Michigan State. We'll see about that one. Anyway, wrapping up tonight's coverage, I'm joined here by Josh Walfish, Colin Becht. I'm Jonah Rosenblum. Please follow us on Twitter at The Daily Sports, and also check www.dailynorthwestern.com for all of our live coverage from Lincoln, Nebraska. Thank you so much, and have a great night.